I think we've been the hunted for a long time. We know everybody wants to beat us. He's loose. On top players and a touchdown. Name in the bright lights. The fun's the competition. That's why you come to close. Did y'all all stand up? Yes. Nice. Did you go to dinner last night? I did. Yeah, for Welcome back to Clemson. You can. Seminoles. Coach, thank you so much for being here yeah, with us. Thank you all for coming to Clemson and, and uh, showcasing this great town. It's great. I love the Southern hospitality. Thank he's got, you. He's got this big smile on his face because when. This is this is this is this is, this is far worse. This is years this is, in the making. This is, this is I love far it. worse. Years. Far in the I love worse. it. Facing Max, the music. Max, on the other hand. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm he's good. Cool. Uh, listen, I saw what you guys were doing. I saw what you were up to. You know. Now I see. I see the. I, to me, to me, I see a competition for the number one spot in the college football universe. And I don't mean on a year-to-year -year basis. I mean, whose era is this? Are we? Are we still in an era where you guys are contesting you against Nick Saban and your program against his? Or are we in a new era that is the Clemson era, the way the previous one was the Alabama era, Coach? I don't know about all that. I'll let y'all figure that out. We're just, we just, we just little old Clemson trying to be the best we can be every year. I, I'm going to save you here. I'm going to play a little sound of you oh. from yesterday. Okay. Let's all take a listen to that, and then you're going to follow this up. This is yesterday? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's nothing wrong with Trent, and I don't like people trying to create drama. There's no drama on this team, so what do people do? They want to create drama. It's the most unbelievable thing. There's no drama. Ain't nothing wrong with Trent. Drives me crazy. There's no drama on our team, and so we just want to create some drama. Oh, Trevor missed a throw. He must be hurt. No, he's human. He's human, all right? So here's what I'm confirming. Trevor Lawrence is a great football player and a great leader, and there ain't nothing wrong with him. All right, you took a lot of flack for the close win, obviously, against UNC. Can you please follow up on what you were explaining yeah. there to everybody? Yeah, took well, a lot of heat. Well, first of all, you know, we shouldn't have um, uh, reporters asking our players private medical stuff that we haven't put out there released right. and uh so that's what happened and so this speculation gets out there uh because for you know maybe he hasn't met other people's expectations but he's met our expectations he's played great he's run great he's made some huge plays extending plays big scrambles big throws uh, our third down percentage is higher than it was after five games last year we're throwing for more yards per game after five games but you know people kind of have this you know, they'd like to build people up and tear them down, but there was this, this, this underlying thing like, oh, my God, there's something wrong with him. They're, they're keeping it a secret. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And uh, it started with um, kind of a question that should not have been asked. You know, when guys are hurt, we tell them. There's nothing wrong with him. Uh, and so people want to create something. Isn't that coming from a place where they're trying to ex understand how this guy who looked, you say he's human. He didn't look human last year. How all of a sudden you're seeing some things where you're like, oh, he's missing a throw. And, and, and it's not coming from a bad intentions place. It's coming from a trying to explain what they're seeing yeah. place. Well, no, he missed throws last year. He took too many sacks. Uh, he, he, he did not use his legs like he needed to. So I see all the good things he's doing. But, yeah, he's had, he's had some bad plays too. But if you really look at it, he's played one fourth quarter game. You know, we could have left him in against Georgia Tech, and he'd have, he'd have all these stats. We could have left him in against Syracuse. We could have left him in against Char Charlotte and scored 100 points. And that's not what we're about. We want to dominate the opponent, but we're not here to embarrass people. You know, and I, and I want other guys to play. So it's not about all of that. But, but the thing for me was, was North Carolina. Uh, it's the first time in 20 games that I've ever seen Trevor Lawrence with a game on the line in the fourth quarter. His, and so it was good to see him respond. Mm -hmm. And, and I, thought, I didn't think he played great against North Carolina. He made a couple minute errors. He missed a touchdown throw. And when, and when you barely are getting the ball, we only had like 60 plays, it, it, it gets compounded. We had a bunch of offsides. 
just some misplaced. It was a funky no. day, but he found a way to get it done. It was the first time that I saw him mm -hmm. in that situation, and I, I'm super proud of him. He's done an awesome job. As a beat writer for <clears throat> over 17 years, I totally agree with you about questions not needing to be asked about a kid's medical situation yep. without going through the program. This ain't the pros. It's yeah, all I do is ask me. It's exactly. It's college, <laughs> and you have, to do, you have to know better than that. So I give you that. But I will ask you this question. When you look at him right now, he's completing a, a little bit better than 61% of his pass. He's got five interceptions in five games. Yep. Obviously, he's human and what have you. But talk to me about the Trevor Lawrence that went up against Alabama in the national championship game and played lights out and looked absolutely spectacular to the Trevor Lawrence that we have seen this year. What is the difference in your mind? He's better. Okay. He's smarter. He's bigger. He's stronger. He's faster. He's 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 an unbelievable leader. You like that? Uh, so it's really that simple. Um, you know, again, it's like it's like it's like a, a horse race, and you're you're halfway around the track, and and you got all these people, and you know, you're talking about all these people out here in the front. But just trust me, uh, that old horse, he 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 can run, and he'll be right where he needs to be when it matters. He is he is unbelievable in every regard, and and when, when the season plays out. Will I be, we'll be having this conversation about what a great well, player I, I just want you to be very, very careful about what you're saying, Coach, because you know what? You're talking <laughs> about him and glowing about him as well. You should. He won your national championship, but you're talking about him like you talked about Deshaun Watson. Now, Deshaun Watson is a special man. I know how you feel about him, Mr. Yeah. Deshaun Watson, Michael Jordan, in the yeah. same sentence. That was you. So yeah. are, you, are you speaking in these glowing terms oh, in yeah. similar fashion? Is I, that what you're trying to say? I didn't know if I'd ever have another guy like Deshaun. Uh, and and he's everything Deshaun was, everything, the intangibles, the commitment, the preparation, the poise, the, the he's all of those things, but bigger. He's six six and he's stronger. And he was and better at a younger age run. because he was so, a rookie. Yeah. Coach, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you, like, you talked about certain moments that told you stuff. <laughs> you you talked, asked me the he question. Just, he just, he, 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 I didn't expect that answer. Well, I'm just I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I, I thought you were going to say something like, well, hey, listen, there's only one to show and watch that I can. And he's, he's got, you know, long hair. <laughs> well, he got Deshaun beat in that regard. But his, you know, Deshaun, Deshaun, what makes Deshaun special, he's got the skill set, but it's who he is as a person, yeah, his yeah. humility, his leadership, his commitment, his preparation. The kid graduated in two and a half years. That's exactly what Trevor's going to do. Mm. He, he, it's just his leadership. It's not about him. And, and that's, those are things that you can't coach. I want to get your comment on this moment <clears throat> that you talked about fourth quarter, game on the line. I've never seen him in that situation. The moment that stands out to me so far this season was his tackle in the open field after he threw an interception. How about that? To me, that showed me a lot. I hadn't seen that before. Ooh, Trevor Lawrence, bad throw. What's going on? And then he, he makes a football play. As a head coach, you're like, no, don't try it. Right? In the, uh, listen, your, your prize listen. quarterback? Or did you like what you saw? Oh, my gosh. I loved it. Listen, it's, you know what? That's leadership. And it's not what happens. It's how you respond to what happens. You know, he didn't pound. He didn't go. And, and, and it wasn't, that interception wasn't his fault. Right, right. But he went, right, he yeah. went and he, he just took that guy out. But you know what, what happened? Our defense goes out there, has a goal line stand, and gets the interception. They get zero points from, think from the one-yard line. So do you think that, that when you say leadership, that sets the tone? Absolutely. Look, the quarterback's making the tackle Absolutely. in the open field. I, Absolutely. I, I want to, I want, you know, what we talk about the quarterback. I mentioned your running game, which has been stout. No, no question about that. And obviously, Higgins and, 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 you know, don't get me started with Justin Russell, what he did. I can't forget about him for the natural. I owe him an apology, too. He'll but let me there, say, He'll be there today. I know he will. But, but <laughs> here's some humble but, pie. But, 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 oh, stop it. <laughs> but I will say this. I want to give the defense some love, too. I mean, I'm looking at Simmons. I'm, I'm looking at a couple of guys that are getting some sacks for you. How do you feel about your defense this Because your defense yeah. will have to show up to deliver the goods. Yeah, there's no doubt. Well, here's where we are. So, obviously, we had a bunch of freakazoids last year. Right. All right. Well, last year, after five games, we were giving up 16 points a game. We're giving up 12. Last year, after five games, we had 17 sacks. We got 19 sacks. Last year, after five games, we had one interception. We got five. So they're playing great. 
Uh, we didn't play our best game in North Carolina. Gave up a big play. We don't usually do that. And then we gave up the long drive at the end of the game. But we, 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 we rose up and got the stop on the two-point. But they've done a phenomenal job. Our back seven it has led the way while we're growing up those guys up front. But I love those guys. Coach V does an unbelievable job. And, and again, we're getting better. We're a team that, that's, that's going to keep improving. You, you've coached teams that have won the national <laughs> title. You've also coached teams that haven't. And yet, we're still great teams. Absolutely. Looking back at it, was there a real fundamental underlying difference between your national championship teams, like the character of those teams, and the teams that didn't quite get there? Is it sometimes just the way the ball bounces? And how would you apply that, that kind of way of looking at it to this team this year? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, you've got to be good enough. Not every team's good enough to win the national championship. And that's okay. That's what, and, and people get mad at me. Our goal is not to win the national championship. We have five goals, and that's not one of them. What are that, they? It, it's to win the opener. It's okay. to win the division. It's to win the state championship, to win the ACC championship, to win the closer. Because we could go undefeated and somebody may not even vote us to go play for the national nice. championship. We don't control that. So it, winning a national championship is a byproduct of what can happen if we achieve our goals, but also we're committed. And so I've had great teams. Sometimes you have a great team. Maybe a player gets hurt. You know, does that mean that everybody else isn't committed? They didn't give everything they had? You know, that 2014 team, number one team in the country, Deshaun got hurt. Mm -hmm. We beat Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You picked against us in that one, too. I don't recall that. And, and, that, that, that wasn't true. And, and we beat them, we beat them 40 to 6. Uh, I did not pick your Oklahoma but, to beat y'all. I got a big memory. But anyway. That's not one of them. <laughs> so, so that team was great. Those guys were amazing. And we didn't win the national championship. That's one of the best teams I've ever coached. I got a question. Yeah. Paul Feinbaum, I got to bring him up again. <laughs> bring him up again. Paul Feinbaum, uh, to his credit, who wanted to be here but couldn't, here's the question that I have for you because you just brought up something else that's very, very important. You don't get to pick and choose whether you're going to be one of those final four teams. You could go undefeated and still end up not being picked to be in the final four. Are you worried at all that the reigning defending national champions could go undefeated and not have an opportunity to represent, to defend your crown in the college football players because they don't put you in there? Are you worried about that? Uh, to steal your word, that's blasphemous. <laughs> Isn't that what you say? Isn't that what you say, Max? He said it. Listen. I thought they were two of you. <laughs> Listen, I listen, you, I pick you. Let me tell you Got something. You. I don't worry two seconds. <laughs> if you, I tell my team, if you sit around and worry about the things that you don't control, right. those things control you. Mm -hmm. So I don't worry about that second. I'm worrying about beating Florida State. I'm worrying about trying to, you know, uh, get Trevor to play up to y'all's standards that y'all all want him to play at. Uh, you too, you too, so. you too. <laughs> so. Let me get in here quickly before we let you go. Can you tell me how you feel about the Fair Pay for Play <clears throat> Act recently yeah. instilled in California? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's going to be a great conversation. You know, I think right now where it sits, like today, if it just like happened today, yeah. it'd probably be good for some individuals, probably not good overall for just college athletics with no parameters. Uh, I am... I love the collegiate model. I love, I value education. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think, and, and, and there's a lot, there's a lot that people don't know. The, the, the modernization of the scholarship and the collegiate model, a lot has happened over the last five years. I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of. Uh, so there's been a lot of positives, but there's still so much more that could be done from a just modernization standpoint and, and, and lots of things. I just think people got to get in a room and smart people, uh, and, and, and they've got to find that common ground, but have some parameters to protect the collegiate model. Uh, I think it's going to be great conversation. I really think there can be some great positives come from it. There's a lot of, I've had, I've had for years, I've had lots of thoughts and suggestions and comments. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it'll go, but, but I do think by the time 2023 gets here, there's going to be some positive change, you know, for the scholar athlete. Right. Uh, but, but, but with, with equality and, you know, across the board. Like right now, I was talking to you last night. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Clemson's brand, we raise a lot of money, but when they cut the checks at the end of the year, Boston College gets the same. Alabama and all that, Vanderbilt gets the same check, you know, because you're in the same league. And so mm -hmm. I think protecting the collegiate model, protecting teams, 
and you know other sports, other full scholarship athletes uh, across the board, whether it be women's basketball or but Coach, whatever. Let me, it ask, let me stop yeah. you there and just ask you a question about that. I, uh, the <clears> best <throat> suggestion I've heard to protect the kind of amateurism that we love about college football and be fair to the players is a suggestion you had about they can make money, but you have to graduate yeah. first, and then you get it at the end. Yeah. So like while you're playing, you're in a yeah. way an amateur, but ultimately you're not not compensated for your efforts. I like that idea a lot. I think, I think it's think interesting. Our country's built on education. And, and if, we, if we get away from that, uh, you know, because very few people are going to play a pro professional ball. And so I think if we did something and we had a fun, like I'd like to see money for the parents to be able to travel. We have that right now. Our, our parents, our senior parents have gotten $17,500 over the last four years from the playoff money in cash, and that's not tax money. So there's been some goods, but there's more opportunity there. I, I wanted to ask you about this. I don't mean to interrupt. I want to yeah. ask you about this. I hear this argument a lot. Well, look, college football, you know, at Clemson and other places like that, that funds a lot of, like, Title IX stuff and other sure. stuff. Why should that be on the football play? Like, if it, doesn't, if it means a lot to the university and to the NCAA, go ahead and fund it. You have endowments. Fund those other things. Why should it be on the backs of the college football yeah. players? Well, because, you know, universities are businesses, and, and it, not many universities can fund all of those things. So uh, there's very few Clemsons or Alabamas that generate the type of money. There's a lot of colleges that, that would have to make some tough decisions, and uh, the student-athlete experience would change drastically. But... Again, I think there's a common ground. I always tell people, the people on the far left, people on the far right, they're the same people. It's the people that can find some common ground in the middle that create progress and create change. And so I think it's going to generate awesome conversation, already has. And uh, I think by the time this thing, all, it's going to be litigated and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be great positive change and modernization. But me personally, like you said, I would like to see us tie things to, to education. And so it's the same for this guy and, you know, I mean, that, that left guard that nobody knows uh, is the same. And so when you walk across that stage and you get that degree, so whatever that lightness money, whatever it is, and you know what? It's the same for the guy at East Carolina. It's the same for the guy, you know, to protect the collegiate model. That's, I think there's a lot of discussion that will come through that. And uh, in the end, uh, smart people will get it together yep. and this great game will, will continue and, and education uh, will continue to be the foundation. Education is the key, and obviously we're still three years out. This man, since he took over five ACC... Great slate of NFL games. We will be making our picks, Stephen A. and Max. Our week six picks do not go anywhere. Good stuff, man.